Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Plante part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. As I said, before we go ahead with the different sub-classification or sub-categories of plant kingdom, let us understand the different classification systems. So we should actually know that how the classification is done. So we will see that how different classification systems evolved with time and how better classification systems came up with the passage of time. So here we will discuss about the three classification systems that is artificial system, natural system and phylogenetic system. So we will talk about each of these systems one by one. And we will see that each of these systems has different basis for classification. I mean, we all know, right? What is the basis of, what do we mean by basis of classification? That means, what are the characteristics or what are the features based on which organisms are classified? So that basis of classification is different for each of them. And let us try to understand each in little more detail. So let us start with the artificial classification systems. The word artificial, what does it mean? Artificial means something which is not natural, something which is man-made. So this artificial system is the most ancient system of classification. So in the earlier days when this concept of classification came up, so the type of classification which was followed that time was the artificial classification system. So what was the basis of this classification systems? It was based on the external morphological characters. External morphological characters. What do we mean by that? The characters which are visible externally. Morphology is something related to the external structure of an organism. So for example, um, the color. Color is something which is externally visible to everybody. For example, some, some animals have, are black in color, some animals are red in color, some trees are green in color, some trees are uh, something different in color. So, color is an external morphological character. Again, if you take other examples, it is like um, the number of leaves in a plant, the shape of the leaves in a plant. So, these are some of the characters which are externally visible. So based on those externally visible characters, the organisms were classified. So even plants were also classified into different types based on such features like number of leaves in that plant, the shape of the leaves, shape of the plant as such, height of the plant, color of the plant. So based on such characters. Now let us look at the advantages of artificial system. Now it is very obvious that closely related species could be classified because based on these external features also you can at least make a difference between two different organisms because their external appearance are quite different. So if we take example of, of plants for example if you take consider um, um, a small a lotus plant and if you consider a cactus now in the external appearance itself they differ in many things so such species could be classified so closely related species could be classified right okay so closely related species were together again closely related species were together so some sort of classification was possible so at least something was better than nothing so we were doing some classification and that was good enough now looking at its limitations, equal weightage to vegetative and sexual characteristics. Okay, so here I think we have something to understand first. What do I mean by vegetative and sexual characteristics? And what do I mean by equal weightage to these characteristics? So let us first let us try to understand what are vegetative characteristics and what are sexual characteristics. When I talk about vegetative characteristics, they are the somatic characteristics or the somatic structures of plants. That means the structures of a plant body. So they are vegetative characters. Examples of vegetative characters would be the root system of the plant, the shoot system, that is the stem, the leaves of the plant. So they are all vegetative characters. Now, when I talk about sexual characters, I am talking about the reproductive structures. So 
we can note it down here. So when I talk about vegetative characters, I am talking about the somatic structures, that is the structures of the plant body. When I talk about the sexual characteristics, we are talking about the reproductive structures. So now these reproductive structures are again different in different types of plants. For example, if we take the flowering plants, so there the reproductive structure is the flower. So the flower and fruits, they form, they play a very important role in reproduction. But if we consider the non-flowering plants, for example, the pine trees, which you see generally in the hilly areas, they do not have flowers, they neither have fruits. So in their case, their reproductive structure is something else. Their reproductive structures are cones. So we will talk about all these things in detail in the later half of the lesson. But what I'm trying to say is the reproductive structures in different plants are different. Now, maybe you have two types of plants where the you have two plants whose vegetative characteristics are the same, but their reproductive structures are very much different. So that is also possible. Now, in this system of classification, equal weightage was given to both these structures. That means if to, I mean, the amount of importance you give to the external or the bodily structures of the plant, the same amount of significance was given to the reproductive structures. But the fact was that when you consider the vegetative characteristics, they can change with time because the like the, the stem of the plants can change with time. The leaves can change their color with time. The number of leaves can also change with different seasons. So the vegetative characteristics, they are not constant with time. They keep changing with time due to many environmental conditions. So they should not be considered as much as the sexual characteristics for classification because sexual characteristic is something which is permanent it is not going to change with time it is not going to get affected by the weather conditions it will still remain the same for example in a flowering plant or where you have fruits so there their reproductive structures will remain the same doesn't matter even if they lose their leaves or the color of the leaves changes so the sexual characteristics are not variable with time but the vegetative characteristics will change with time. So it is really unfair to give both of them equal weightage to classify different types of plants. Sexual characteristics should get more importance than the vegetative characteristics. So this was one important limitation and because of this limitation, it was seen that many species which differ in their reproductive structures even they were under the same group just because their somatic structures were similar so just because they looked similar from outside they were put into the same group even though their internal structures or their reproductive structures their reproductive process was completely different from the other type of plants. So this was a very important limitation of this artificial classification system. So here you can see in this picture, one is a plant which bear fruit, the other is a plant which is a pine tree which doesn't bear fruit. So both of them, even though if you, if you look at them from outside, both will have the roots, both will have stem, both will have leaves, but that doesn't mean that they should fall under the same category. So more importance has to be given, given to the sexual characteristics. So this artificial classification system was not a great success. But then since it was the ancient one, the first one which came up, so at least it showed us the way of classification. So thereafter, with time, came up the natural classification system. So let us see what did this natural classification system do. So in the artificial system, everything was dependent, the basis of classification were the external structures. So in this case, external as well as internal structure, the characters were considered for classification. So that means it was something better than the artificial system because not only the external but the internal structures were also considered. So now when, it, when I say internal characters, so what kind of characters am I talking about? So internal characters would mean, for example, if we are classifying plants, 
So not only the leaf, stem and root of the plants will be considered, but also the reproductive structure of the plants, the plant embryo, all these things were also be, needs to be considered. The chemicals which are present inside a plant. So all these kind of things were taken into consideration. So this was any day a better mode of classification than artificial system. So advantages overshadows limitations of artificial system because as I said, artificial system was very much superficial. So it could definitely overshadow the disadvantages of artificial system. Establishes relationship between organisms. Now, how could the system of classification establish relationship between different organisms? That's because uh, when we actually start classifying organisms, so what do we do? We actually try to study the similarities and dissimilarities between different organisms. So the organisms sharing a lot of similarities with each other, we say that they are related to each other in the way that maybe they share a common ancestor. So that is how we can establish a relationship between different organisms. Let us take an example. Uh, if you consider a tiger and a lion, and a cat. You see that there are a lot of similarity between these organisms even though a tiger and a cat they are not the same organism right they are two different organisms but still they share a lot of similarity. So looking at those similarity and that similarity is not only in its appearance it is both external characters as well as internal characters. So we see that a tiger and a cat are more closely related than a tiger and a dog because the similarities between a tiger and a cat is much more than that of a tiger and a dog. So looking at the similarities and dissimilarities definitely helps us to classify organisms and it also helps us to establish relationship between organisms. But again, even this system had certain limitations. So there were some disadvantages associated with this system as well. Closely related organisms can also differ in important properties. Now, even though two organisms have a lot of similar external characters, a lot of similar internal characters. But even then, it was seen that they differed from each other in some very, very important properties. So one of the one of the best examples would be the pathogenic bacteria and the non-pathogenic bacteria. So see, both are bacteria. So as such, their structure remains the same uh, even their internal structure their behavior their habitat I mean, their, their mode of nutrition all these things remain the same for both these kind of bacteria but if you look at the pathogenic bacteria they are pathogens that means they can cause disease they can cause harm to their host but you look at if you look at the non-pathogenic bacteria they do not so behavior wise they both are completely different from each other so with this classification system, so these two bacteria will fall under the same class. So there were no further classification of bacteria into pathogenic and non-pathogenic, right? So that was one important limitation of the natural system of classification. So talking about this, we can take the example of pathogenic and non-pathogenic bacteria. So what did we see? How did, do, did we improve with the natural system of classification? The natural now, the natural system of classification's basis do not change with time. So now here, more importance is not given to the vegetative characters. Both vegetative and sexual characters are considered and more importance is given to the sexual characters, that is the internal characters. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.